Welcome everybody to Deb Chanel's 48th World, where we're going to be discussing and recapping the K. Michelle story, or the K. Michelle My Life, Season 3, Episode 1, uh, Between a Tour and a Hard Place is the topic of her segment or episode of her uh, third season. Okay, basically we know K. Michelle has a son, she travels a lot. She's looking for love and this and that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But one thing I was interested in seeing was her man and a little bit more coverage of her man in this particular episode. But they only gave us a brief introduction of him. And it was so brief. If I would have sneezed, I would have missed the whole scene. Okay. So you're going to do you need to do better with that one, K. Michelle. Let's go right on into that first scene. She's performing at the Fox Theater. This happened around July of this year, 2016. Uh, it seems like she had a great performance. Her mother and sister came down for the festivities and to get a glimpse at her new restaurant that she's supposed to be opening called Puff and Petals or something like that. Uh, I got it in my notes, but we'll go back as we get closer to that scene. But, you know, she's having a fantastic performance and um, after she performs and, and um, that, you know, essence of her show, we have Jonathan comes back uh, to her dressing room after she's performed and he gives her all the praises, all the love and goes on to say that was his favorite show. I'm like, come on, come on. I guess she said it all the time, all day, every day. She has a performance because you're her motivator, aren't you, Jonathan? But she's basically... Um, before she ends her concert, she's telling them how glad she's um, glad to be back at home. But again, Memphis is her home. So I guess she's adopted us as her second home, other than being in L.A. Okay, But she's talking to the crowd at her concert about her man, her new man, her family. She's trying to build with him. And, you know, she's also making, uh, poking fun at the package that he's got. That he's packing me in the sausage. She's, you know, laying down the pipe with her whenever they get a chance to make love or have sex or however she sees that. She's giving all this information at her concert. And I'm like, girl, too much information. Too much information. Okay. Then she also thanks God for a wonderful performance. All the blessings he has bestowed upon her and her performance being a success. So. Like I said, Jonathan comes in after the concert and he congratulates her and this, that, and the third. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. And then she tells us how Jonathan just picks up uh, wherever he is and follows her really around the 50 states as well as globally. <laughs> so I'm like, he just be leasing everything, I guess, until Kay wants to completely dissolve her uh, music career and just settle down and be a wife. Then I wonder where... Mr. Jonathan will resign then. But anyway, her mother comes in and um, talks to her about her performance. And y'all, she really kind of talked like Dr. Simone on Married to Medicine. I was like, wait a minute, I had to do a double take to make sure that wasn't her. But anyway, she goes on to talk to her mom. And her mom is saying, you know, she was kind of disappointed her and her father about the direction she took for her career, her livelihood. Because she could have done so much better because, you know, she is a... Um, bachelor degree earning or probably master's degree earning at uh family i believe it is she's a delta sorority uh little alumni also so she's a smart chick even though sometimes her actions don't show that okay but she got it going on up up in her head as well so um you know k starts to cry and all this that and the third and i'm like mama 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 just as long as she ain't doing nothing illegal we can only drain them to the river to drink if they don't want to partake of what we want so as long as she's doing stuff legally and she's making money honestly and it's making her happy let have because that's pretty much what i've said about my daughter as well um but miss pat is looking good for her age and her daughter her other daughter is looking um very nice looking as well so very good nice looking family even though i didn't see papa Wonder where dad is, you know, but I guess he didn't want to be on camera. He's not about that life. So it is what it is on that front. But she goes in and tell her mom her restaurant going to be opening in three days. And 
you know, they toasted that and all that. And I'm like, wait a minute now. Have you made, have you got your permits? Have you done all this? Because you ain't really showed your restaurant, you know, that much when you left it last season. And I'm like, it wasn't completed then. It looked at like a complete horror. So I'm like, did you talk to people before you start opening up your mouth? What you going to think you're going to have as an opening or whatnot? And what publicity did you do? Did you spout flyers? Did you tell the radio stations? I mean, come on, girl. You all acting all willy-nilly. Like this is your first time rodeo, in the rodeo. Okay? Or at the rodeo, I should say. But we leave that situation. We go to commercial. We come back. We have Jonathan meets with Kay at some restaurant. They always have something another day after they've been doing something you know, pretty deep or interesting. They always meet back up for lunch or dinner just to talk about the comings and goings of that previous day. So that's pretty much what's going on. But Jonathan has a little chip on his shoulder. He's on 1,000 already. And I'm like, this is too early up in the day to be having stress unless you're dealing with Uncle Sam <laughs> or Sally Mae. All right. If you're not dealing with those two things, you ain't got no man problems. You know, the boot with that, settle down. It all can be worked out, which all of the rest of the stuff I just named pre prior to that can be worked out, too. But we just going to deal with Jonathan on a uh, long-handed spoon, if you know what I mean. So he comes in, he talks to Casey, how she's doing, you know, all this and third. Then he goes right on in to say how P. London has screwed him over. She's dissed his gayness and the gay community and da 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 and you know k rochelle looking at him like are you crazy that's you know we're the three musketeers we don't talk about each other we defend one another okay against all and everybody okay so <laughs> he she just couldn't believe it he just kept talking 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 showing her information because they were dealing like, i didn't follow it too well or it just wouldn't it didn't meet my radar or giving much attention to it Jonathan shows a post of how some rapper had put him out there and he was really doing some male uh, gay bashing and it, he used Jonathan's um, video likeness or his, one of his photos and he was just trashing him through social media. And then he comes to find out by watching this guy, you know, try to tear down his name in the public forum, he noticed the different columns where you go in and you like something under somebody's uh, profile or you dislike it or whatever. He saw P. London's name under there as approving to what this guy was saying against Jonathan and the gay community. And he couldn't believe that was her name. So, you know, he's going to do his due diligence. He did research and he found out that it really was her. <laughs> and he's just going off. I mean, he was livid. I'm like, wait a minute. P. London's not here to um, pretty much defend herself. Come on, y'all supposed to be friends. So I always give your friend the benefit of the doubt before you call a spade a spade. So anyway, K. Michelle says, calm down, just calm down now. Because I can't choose between both of y'all. I'm like, wait a minute now. You don't really have to choose from neither one of them. They basically need to, you know, hash it out themselves and you play mediator. Which in turn, that's what you really pretty much uh, sought out to do anyway. So... Then she goes in and tries to defend her, saying, well, you know, uh, P. London ain't playing with a fool dead. Anyway, because, you know, she's just like that. I, I hate to say that, but it's true. So let's not get all up because, you know, sometimes, you know, when you know better, you need to do better. And we need to call her out on that. But I'm sure it's not nothing, Johnson. I'm not trying to play it down. But we'll get to the bottom of this. But you know she know you know she don't know no better. <laughs> That's what she's trying to say about P London. I'm like, boy, Kate throwing some major shade. She needs to stop it, right? Uh, and then she she goes into her confessionals. Okay, and she said, Hey, if anybody did that mess to me, and I take out these earrings, this wig, this, that, and the third, take out my Tina Turtle shingle dress, and I had to kick a wolf's mask out of him. I'm like, Okay, you ain't about that life if you ready, unless you ready to go to uh, jail and you already got some bond money coming up. Now, I don't think your new husband or husband to be going to want you all out there acting willy nilly, fighting everybody. This ain't no street brawl, and you definitely ain't back in high school, so you need to chill. Chill, baby. But well, she just saying what she would do. <laughs> I'm like, I would be like that too, but somebody had to hit me first because then it would be self-defense. And then I'm kicking to destroy somebody like 
pretty much put them six feet under. Okay, but like I said, it'll all have to be in a self defense mechanism mode. Okay, we leave there. We go uh, go there to commercial. We come back. We have K Michelle goes to check on Puff and Petals, which is a new restaurant. Because at first I thought, hey, she's supposed to be open up some kind of hookah bar. Now, how did it turn into a, from a hookah bar to a restaurant? I hadn't been following her that well, so I'm guessing it turned into that. So she's going to have a series of things going on at her restaurant full of hookah barring, uh, you know, smoking and, and entertaining, and she's going to have some food to boot. So it sounds real nice. Um, uh, her idea, she wants to come to fruition. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Have you checked with these people? Have you had dialogue with these people? Have you seen... Uh, Photos, Instagram posts, you know, pictures that they sent to your cell phone that you can see the progress that has been made from last year to this year. You understand what I'm saying? Or hell, at least the last season when you was taping telling us about it. So uh, if you haven't done all of this, how can you assume? Because you know what assume does, make asses out of ourselves. So we don't want you to look like an ass. And we don't want to, it be scripted. For ass uh, fuckery, okay? So we really need you to be on point when you're sitting there trying to tell everybody, oh, I want my restaurant open in, you know, three days, but you ain't checked on hard and no progress. You don't even know if the permits have gotten passed. I mean, these are things, okay, you are a college-educated woman. I expect more from you and more you should be giving to me, Okay. With all of that on your resume. So, therefore, you're acting like you are willy-nilly. All this is new to you. Like you have no brains attached to your restaurant. Which makes me think, who's handling your accounting? <laughs> I need to know that as well. If you flake it out on wondering why your restaurant is not is looking bad on the outside. And just tore up from the floor up in the inside. And then you come and talk to your project manager, Nicole. And your business partner, Shamia. You know, they looking at you stupid and you looking at them like they stupid. And you talking about going to do some check a booty dance to get some action up in here and finish these details of this restaurant on the inside as well as the aesthetics on the outside. So I'm like, come on, girl. Don't play down with me. We don't been too far riding together because I definitely did past seasons of your show. And I got a pretty uh, nice following of the videos that I put out that they like my coverage. So I'm like, come on, let's not let the people down. We got to get the people what they want. All right. And right now you're giving us fake fuckery right now. Yeah, foolishness. And I ain't about it. So that's why I'm letting you know in this video. Come back to reality. This is not what we want to see. OK. Anyway, we go to commercial from that mess. Come back. We have Jonathan, Kate, uh, P. London and some other person. They're out enjoying themselves at a little nightclub called Lips or some kind of lounge club. I don't know. Um. And P. London, you know, Jonathan goes in and buys everybody some shots. He said, okay, we need to talk about this, this situation. Because <laughs> it's been festering on his soul. And he needs to let it go. <laughs> okay? Let it go and let God. I want to tell my little Jonathan. Let it go and let God. But he's like, okay, no. I need to let it go on all on her ass and get her straight. So that she'll never make this uh, mess of a horrific uh, mistake again. So, um, like I said, they all get together. And, you know, John is just trying to understand the whole situation. So he kind of pretty much put all the cards on the table of what he felt had happened. And they try to educate P. London on what she needs to do when she's talking about the gay community or the lesbian community or whatever, you know, or he's wanting to put out there for the forefront. You don't do that. You got to pick a side. You know I'm gay. You know I'm all about that life. You know those are my people. And I will defend them till the day I die. And with you aligning with people that hate gay people, or lesbians, this, that, and that, that makes you look bad in my eyes. And it makes me look like you're not my friend. You're my enemy. And so, you know, Kay was calling herself being a little mediator between the both of it. And, P. London, I'm sure she knew what she was doing. She just was caught up in the moment. I guess she didn't think a lot of people on social media, even her friends, that she break bread with. And they could see certain things. And if you align yourself with certain people, then people are going to be like, okay, it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, it must be a duck. Or people that are questionable, uh, depending on whether they're shit starters or, you know, they're gay or lesbian or homophobic or you know any type of social issue that you're claiming out there if you're hanging with you know, people that 
or anti whatever, they're going to assume you're anti too. It's not fair to be judging people on those uh, type of stigmas, but as a society, there are people out there, individuals that do judge by who you hang around without really formulating their own plan of action and just talking to you a little bit more to take your stance on it. You know what I'm saying? Because just because you go to a lesbian or gay bar doesn't mean that you're a lesbian. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're totally in that type of essence all the time, all day, every day. And you're hanging around certain people that tend to be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Just have a conversation. Let someone know or ask someone before you make a decision on what you feel they are all about. So that's basically what Jonathan was trying to give her education on. So she kind of felt many people under that she did. Huh? Okay. That she did make a mistake. Um, Kevin Show was saying, okay, hug it out. And she was, you know, saying she's going to make amends for that. She's going to make him make up for that, which I'm like, just don't say nothing stupid. Just don't follow people that saying derogatory things about a person or a subject that you don't agree with, don't like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can read it and you can, can keep moving on. But when you put like, it's like you're endorsing whatever the conversation is all about or the subject of the matter. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, pre we're going to need you to do better. Reading is very fundamental. You know, well, Jonathan and K. Michelle will probably be kicking your ass. All right. But anyway, we got a commercial. We'll leave that situation. We're back at K. Michelle. She's having a little sit down talk with the rapper or uh, R&B artist Trina from Miami. Uh, you know, she's the baddest chick. <laughs> she used to hang around with, um, God, I can't remember his name. Uh, oh, I can't remember his name, but he was a, a rapper too from Miami with her. Uh, in fact, Jackers, please let me know who you know I'm talking about. May come to my mind before this uh, review ends, but I'm not. Trick Daddy, there you go. Trick Daddy. Remember Trick Daddy and Trina? It came out around the same time. He brought her out. Uh, she was on a lot of his um, rap uh, songs, um, mixtapes and all that thing, so check her out. Um, but anyway, she's visiting Kay here in Atlanta. Cause she lives in the Miami too, and they ain't nothing but a hot skip and a jump. You know what I'm saying? So they could definitely go back and forth and visit one another. But she comes in and tell, you know, Kevin Shell, honey, you need to rest. You need to, you know, I know you're disappointed and you're kind of stressed out that your restaurant didn't take off and, and have this grand opening like you planned. But I'm like, come on, you was just giving me fuckery, Kevin Shell, because I didn't see any publicity about your restaurant. This is something you just had at the top of your head, and all like, I need to, you know, hype this up and just that and third. Now, it, it takes months of planning. It takes inviting people out, especially your heavy hitters in the industry. And you need radio talk time, okay, about your event. All right? They have guest artists coming to, you know, partake of song or two here. So, no, you were just giving it for the cameras, and it, it failed miserably because they nobody about this shit. But anyway, she was talking about her disappointment with Trina, about the restaurant not opening, about her being so tired, you know, with the 30 city tour and this, that. Now, like, but on the other hand, you say you love performance. So get it right. Get it right. Enjoy your bliss because you're not going to always have it. Somebody else is going to take your place. So, you know, if that was the case, you'll still see Diana Ross out there touring and all this stuff and Tina Turner as well as uh, Rita Franklin. But they do here and there. And we really don't want Rita Franklin to come out too much unless she's definitely prepared in the wardrobe section because they want to see them sagging breasts no more. No way. Every day, all day, that's a no-go fly zone, okay? But anyway, what I'm saying, everybody has their time, their peak, where they uh, reap all their fame and fortune. And then they kind of uh, not disappear, but they go, I want to say in hiding. For lack of a better word, I'll just say they just be kind of like on a hiatus. <laughs> if you catch my drill. So everything and everyone has a time period when it comes to the industry anyway, period. And at a po certain point in your life, you should be trying to produce people or be their manager or something to that effect versus going out there performing all the time. You know, you should have other avenues of revenue coming in where you don't have to do it unless it's just one song and you're doing it for a tribute to somebody or they're honoring you. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. She goes on to give her great advice, you know, slow down. I know you hate that. 
But, you know, find your answers. Be with your man. Start this family you're talking about after your, your 30 city tour ends. And, you know, make that a reality along with your other business adventures. Because you're supposed to have, like, a home good uh, adventure or um, resource going on. I never saw that. I'm like, I ain't in the home goods all the time. But I never saw a collection in there. So I'm about to check that out. You know, and then she has a new man. He's not a husband yet, so she should be planning a wedding. She's got this new music that's always generating from her. And, you know, she, like I said, she's trying to start a family. She's trying to bring that restaurant into fruition. So that's just a whole lot going on, especially if you're doing it by yourself, which it seems like she is. She's all about that coin. I don't blame her. Um, when shit goes south of the marriage, at least, you, you know, you come out still smelling like a rose because you ain't invested none of that to be partake in the way you get married. So, hope she got a strong-ass prenup. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If she not have one, she better, you know, think about it. <sighs> so, uh, she also, Trina Mini, her give her advice. Why don't you go home and get some rest, you know, to your homeland? But not homeland, but, you know, state that she actually was born and raised in. So, at the end of the episode, she um, gives her mom a call and says she's coming home. Of course, her mom's coming home. Are you coming home to stay? I'm like, Mom, you just gave her kudos of having a great concert. Do you really think she's coming home to small-ass Memphis to sit there and rock away babies and, and build her um, another restaurant down there where she ain't got the one up in here in Atlanta open yet? Are you serious? But anyway, that's a really cute scene. And then they show episodes of what's coming up for next time. So, really, it was a good, you know, it wasn't dry, but it wasn't rich either. So, um, I love K. Michelle. She gives me entertainment life. Love her personality. Love that she's still doing the darn thing and challenging herself within everything she's trying to succeed. Uh, uh, yeah, succeed for her life and her family. So, that was my take on K. Michelle, My Life Season 3, Episode 1. Between a tour and a hard place. Hope y'all enjoy it. Have a good holiday. And we'll be back next week giving you more coverage on each episode. Thank you on our next episode. Blessings. Bye-bye.